Neanderthal remains from Belgium have long perplexed scientists, with fossil remains from Spy Cave yielding ages as recent as 37,000 years ago, placing their bones and tools among the most recent Neanderthals in Europe. When radiocarbon dating identified the spy Neanderthals as among the most recent to survive in Northwest Europe, concerns were raised about the date's reliability. Researchers used techniques to purify Neanderthal fossil samples for carbon dating, removing any influence from modern carbon material that could make dates appear younger. Several sites, for example, that were previously thought to be some of the last outposts of late surviving Neanderthals, were dated much earlier in this study. Nonetheless, the overall pattern appears clear. In the study, researchers redated the Neanderthal extinction in Europe and discovered that nearly all Neanderthals went extinct roughly 40,000 years ago. The paper titled Re-Evaluating the Timing of Neanderthal Disappearance in Northwest Europe suggests that Neanderthals left the region much earlier than previously thought. The new chemistry methods used at Spy Cave and other Belgian sites are the only way to decontaminate these key Neanderthal bones for dating and ensure that all contaminants have been completely removed. Scientists discovered that a Neanderthal scapula from the Spy Cave, which produced very recent dates, around 28,000 years ago, was heavily contaminated with modern bovine DNA. These findings indicate that the bone had been preserved using a glue made from cattle bones. In the new study, scientists used advanced radiocarbon dating techniques to date the fossil bones. They were able to date the Neanderthal remains by extracting a single amino acid using liquid chromatography separation. This approach enables scientists to reliably date the bones while excluding carbon from contaminants such as the glue used on the fossils. These contaminants have hampered previous attempts to date the Neanderthals because their presence resulted in dates that were far too young. Using a more efficient contamination removal procedure and ancient genomic analysis, previous dates based on Neanderthal specimens from Spy Cave are up to 10,000 years too young, and direct radiocarbon dates on Neanderthals reduce the uncertainty for the time window corresponding to Neanderthal disappearance in Northwest Europe. Researchers wanted to re-evaluate these ages, believing that contamination could have influenced the estimates. The contamination could have affected these estimates due to the use of animal-based glues used during preservation 100 years ago. In fact, Neanderthal remains from Belgium are thousands of years older than previously thought, according to the study. Scientists at Oxford's Radiocarbon Accelerator Unit redated Neanderthal specimens from Spy Cave. The majority of the dates obtained in this new study were found to be significantly older than those obtained previously on the same bone samples, up to 5,000 years older in some cases. The Neanderthal skeletons discovered during excavations in Belgium were named Spy 1 and Spy 2, both males with cranial volumes of approximately 1,300 and 1,500 cubic centimetres. Researchers were able to extract DNA from Spy 94, an upper right molar dated directly to 39,150 to 37,880 years. In other words, the range is 1,270 years, with a median age of 38,515 years, plus or minus 635 years. Researchers believe the SPY-94 molar belonged to the cranium known as SPY-1, identified as a male through DNA analysis. Furthermore, SPY-94 is genetically similar to Goyet Q-56-1, a female Neanderthal from the Goyet Caves of Belgium, who groups closely with other late European Neanderthals. Researchers were able to extract nuclear DNA from the right femur from the female Neanderthal, who lived 43,000 to 42,080 years ago, indicating continuity of the Neanderthal population in the region before the eruption. Engis II refers to a portion of an assemblage discovered in 1829 by Dutch physician and scientist Philippe Charles Schmerling in the Lower Schmerling Caves. Engis II is made up of a partially preserved cranium and related fragments of an upper and lower jaw, a maxillary bone, and an upper incisor tooth from a Neanderthal infant aged two to three years. The Schmerling Caves are located just north of the Belgian municipality Engis, hence the name of this group. 
There are two radiocarbon dates available for NGIS-2. The scientists disregarded the earlier value of 26,820 plus or minus 340 radiocarbon years before present, since it was deemed too young and perhaps contaminated. The more accurate date is 30,460 radiocarbon years ago, which equates to 34,590 to 36,110 years ago after calibration. The identification of Engis II to Homo neanderthalensis and Engis I to Homo sapiens was mostly based on anatomical and chronological parallels, as Engis II was discovered with Neanderthal Musterian artifacts. According to the study, the findings also highlight the importance of using robust pre-treatment methods when dating Paleolithic human remains in order to reduce contamination bias. Scientists are currently analysing archaeological evidence, such as bone tools, to improve our understanding of the cultural transition between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens in this region. In fact, researchers were able to extract nuclear DNA from Goyet Q56-1, a right femur from a Neanderthal dating back 43,000 to 42,080 years. DNA analysis reveals that Goyet Q56-1 was a female. Goyet Q56-1 is genetically similar to Spy 94A from Spy Cave and groups closely with other late European Neanderthals. Genetic studies of the Goyet Neanderthals have provided crucial data on the genetic makeup of late Neanderthal populations in Europe. These studies revealed typical Neanderthal genetic markers contributing to the broader understanding of their population structure. Analysis of mitochondrial DNA from Goya Neanderthals has shown that they had distinct maternal lineages compared to other Neanderthal groups across Europe and Asia. This points to some genetic diversity among Neanderthals. Nevertheless, the mitochondrial DNA of Goyet Neanderthals falls within the broader framework of known Neanderthal maternal lineages, which are less diverse than those found in modern human populations. This lower diversity suggests that Neanderthals may have had smaller, more isolated population groups with less gene flow between them. The Goye mitochondrial DNA reveals that these Neanderthals were part of a group with a shared maternal lineage that was present in Western Europe during the late Neanderthal period. The findings from Goye support the idea that Neanderthals were capable of complex behavior, including the use of tools, hunting, and possibly symbolic acts, as seen in other European sites. The age of the Goye Neanderthal fossils places them close to the time when modern humans were also present in Europe. This temporal overlap supports the notion that interactions between Neanderthals and modern humans were possible and potentially frequent. Genetic data from these Neanderthals contribute to understanding the gene flow between the two species and how Neanderthal genetic material was integrated into the early modern human gene pool. The Neanderthals from the Goyet Caves represent an essential part of the late Neanderthal population in Europe. The combination of fossil and genetic evidence from this site provides insights into their lifestyle, genetic diversity, and potential interactions with early modern humans. The findings enhance our understanding of Neanderthal behavior, including tool use, social structures, and adaptability during the challenging climates of the Ice Age. Overall, the Goyet Caves contribute significantly to the narrative of Neanderthal existence, highlighting their complexity as a species and their place in human evolutionary history. Goye Q, 116-1, an upper Paleolithic individual from Belgium's Goye Caves, has undergone a number of genetic analyses, which have revealed information about physical characteristics, such as pigmentation, eye color, hair color, and genetic lineage. Here's what we know. The genetic profile of Goya Q116-1 indicates that this person had relatively light skin, but not as light as modern Europeans. Early European hunter-gatherers frequently exhibited skin pigmentation adapted for regions with less sunlight exposure, but complete depigmentation may not have been present. Genetic data from similar individuals in the Upper Paleolithic such as those from European hunter-gatherer groups, suggest a range that could include dark, brown eyes, though blue or lighter eyes became more common in subsequent populations. Goye Q116-1 probably had dark hair. 
Early European hunter-gatherers, including those with the same genetic background as Goyette Q116-1, tended to have dark hair as the dominant trait. These characteristics indicate that Goye Q116-1 and related populations were adapted to the European environment at the time, contributing to the genetic diversity seen in later European populations. The Goye Q116-1 fossil is believed to have been created around 35,000 years ago, during the Upper Paleolithic. This time period corresponds to the Aurignacian culture, which is one of Europe's oldest known modern human societies. Western hunter-gatherers, such as Goya cavemen, were among Europe's earliest inhabitants during the Upper Paleolithic period. According to genetic analyses, the Goya caveman is a male. Goya Q116-1 was identified from human cranial remains discovered in Belgium's Goya caves. This specimen's analysis was primarily focused on the skull, which provided valuable genetic and morphological information for understanding early European populations. This fossil is part of a collection of modern human and Neanderthal remains from the Goyet Caves, which has provided important insights into the life, culture, and genetics of early modern humans in Europe during the late Pleistocene. The Neanderthals in the Goyet Caves were among the last of their kind, surviving in Europe during a time of intense environmental and competitive pressure. Goyet Caveman, who had a combination of modern human and Neanderthal DNA, exemplified the early exchange of genetic and cultural traits that would shape future European populations. Neanderthal genes in modern humans influence a variety of traits, including immune system responses and skin adaptations. Understanding how and when Neanderthals vanished is a hotly debated subject. Nevertheless, there were a few small groups of Neanderthals, such as those at Spy Cave, that did survive for a few generations after the 40,000-year window, and with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Also, please subscribe, share, and explore our channel's other highly compelling videos. Thank you and take care.